Captain Zero. Captain Zero. Research explorer in time and space. Somewhere in a remote, uncharted region of the planet called Earth stands the laboratory of Captain Zero. In this secret location, known only to a few in the outside world, Captain Zero and his associates experiment in time and space to learn from the past, to plan for the future. Contact has been established. We now transmit you direct to the laboratory of Captain Zero. Please stand by. What's wrong, Captain? I don't know. We'll just have to check. Okay, here, Captain. Good. Man, you suppose that messenger from France will get through to General Washington all right? We'll have the time machine operating again in just a few seconds, Jet. Stand by. Tetro. Yes, sir. Are you ready in the electro chamber? All set, sir. Then stand by to recheck units 5, 6, and 7 in the multiple triad circuit. Right. Ready, Jet? Ready, sir. Okay, Tetro, give me the unit readings. Unit 5, 90.613. Check here. Uh, check. Unit 6, 90.541. Check here. Check. Unit 7, 81.727. Little low, Captain. Bring up Unit 7 to 90.9. Right. Check. Good. Now let's see if we can pick up Washington at Valley Forge. Right. What time setting? Same year, 1778. Only move ahead to February the 26th. Yes, sir. Tetro. Yes, sir. Stand by to reactivate the time machine. Right. Electro generators, 8.372. Klystron output, 4.931. Set the trilotron at 20.675. Yes, sir. Ready, Jet? Ready, sir. Ready in the electro chamber? All set, Captain. Stand by for signal. Activate the cycle reactor. Good. We're cracking the fourth dimension again and projecting back into time. 1950, 1900, 1850. Steady. We're going back. 1790, 80. Bring up field resistance and stand by. 1778. Set the cycle reactor and lock it. Level of power, Tetro. Man, if that messenger from France is going to arrive, he ought to be there by now. Switch on the sound wave segregator again and patch it into the time machine audio. Then stand by to activate the view screen. Yes, sir. All set, sir. Good. Switch on the view screen. Bring up target voltage. Increase image acceleration. There it is, Jess. Valley Forge in the dead of winter. Golly, didn't they even have shoes? Very few of them did, Jet. How long have they been at Valley Forge, Captain? All winter, and it was one of the coldest in a long time. Why did Washington camp at Valley Forge? Because strategically, it was one of the safest places to be. Washington's problem wasn't so much one of strategy as it was a terrible lack of supplies and the devastated condition of his men. 
Refocus inside Washington's headquarters. Don't blame you for their plight, sir. Small comfort in that they die just the same. Sit down, gentlemen. Sit Thank down. You. How many men have we lost this day? 22 dead, 50 desertions. We'll be fortunate indeed to still have an army when spring comes. We might do something about the desertion, sir. How? Punishment? No. How can you punish a man who's slowly dying from hunger and cold? No blankets, no clothes, little food, no medicine, not even straw to raise him off the frozen ground when he sleeps. Why so many men have stayed to suffer such hardships, I'll never know. It's because they believe in you, sir, and what you're fighting for. right of free men to govern themselves. Sometimes I wonder if it's worth it. Letters I've written to Congress begging for supplies. What do we get? Nothing but excuses and arguments. While all around me, the tents of the living are being crowded out by the graves of the dead. They'd be satisfied, they say, with my management. They want to know why I don't win battles. Only I could ram down their gullet some of the garbage we call supper, or show them the bloody trails in the snow of men without shoes. Action they want. <laughs> By the time those meddling fools are convinced we're dying, those who are able will have staggered home, and the others will be beyond our call. I'd best make the rounds again, sir. Good. I'll be along in a moment. Only the news from France would come. Give us hope. It will come, sir. The messenger may arrive in a matter of hours or even minutes. Thank you, Lieutenant. But that's what I've been telling the men for days. General, Sergeant Stevens would like to see you, sir. He says it's very important. Of course. Sergeant? Down, John. Thank you, sir. I, I think I'd rather stand. I, I'm sorry to disturb you, General, but well said. Go on, John. Gentlemen can't take it any longer. It ain't that they want to desert, but but they just can't help themselves. General, nobody minds dying in battle, sir, but. And like this just seems kind of useless. And it, it ain't that just themselves they're thinking of. Most of them's got families, sir, that's starving too. And had kids. I'm, I'm sorry, General, but I guess ain't many of us built of the same stuff that you are, sir. Well, anyways, I've been delegated to tell you, sir, that them that's got homes is going to them. Come sun up. That is, then that's still able. I hope you understand, sir. It just seems that our cause is, is hopeless. Good night, sir. I'm sorry, sir. I just, I just got a little bit dizzy. Take them to my quarters. 
Keep him warm. Yes, sir. Do all you can for him. It looks bad, sir. Just a few more hours and over half the army deserts. Not deserts, Lieutenant, just goes home. Only one thing can save us now. The messenger from France with good news. Otherwise, our cause is lost. And the bright flame of freedom dies out. Come along, Lieutenant. I'll try to talk to the men. Yes, sir. Golly, if General Howe knew the condition of Washington's armies, he'd attack right now. He does know, Jet, but he has reasons of his own for not attacking. But what do you suppose could have happened to that messenger with the news from France? I don't know. Refocus to Howe's headquarters in Philadelphia. Maybe we can learn something. Quite a contrast, huh, Jet? Man, I'll see. Good evening, Colonel Butler. I'm so glad you could come. Now, there's plenty to eat and drink, so enjoy yourself. Thank you, sir. Well, I, I must say, your parties rival those of England itself. Thank you. A toast to His Sovereign Majesty, King George. King George. Colonel, thank you. And now, to life in Philadelphia. Life in Philadelphia. Uh, forgive me, General Howe, but uh, is it wise to be partying every night with Washington so close by? Uh, would you rather go out in this beastly weather and attack him? Oh, uh, frankly, no, Washington no, can do nothing. So why should we exert ourselves? A few more weeks, and his men will be little more than skin and bones. Washington himself should know this. Have some more punch and relax. General Hauser. Oh, come now, Lieutenant. Surely your business can wait until the morning. But this is rather important, sir. Oh, and what, pray tell, is so important that you should disturb me at such an hour? We've captured a messenger galloping post-haste for Valley Forge. Oh? And what urgent message did he carry that you should interrupt my pleasure? Another argument from this uh, Continental Congress to Washington's plea for supplies. No, sir. Colonel Butler will read it. Yes, sir. I say, sir, this is important. Oh, uh, sir. France has decided to give aid to the Continentals. <laughs> Not much good it will do them. The French ships could not possibly be outfitted to reach these shores before spring. And the ragged rebels at Valley Forge will never last through the winter. Besides, the British Navy will make kindling wood of the foreign vessels if they dare enter into this affair. No, I don't know, sir. I think we should attack Washington now when Colonel he's... Butler! Yes, sir. You are not paid to think, but to follow orders. Yes, sir. Why should we leave the pleasure of these quarters and suffer the discomforts of this beastly weather to fight a ragtail army that will soon fall apart of its own accord? Besides, Washington may still have a few able-bodied men. They might put up a stiff battle, fighting for freedom, you know, and all that sort of rough. But a few more weeks of this freezing weather, and they'll all come crawling out of the hills begging to surrender. Forgive me, sir. But if they should receive word that France has agreed... They will not receive word, Lieutenant. Detain the messenger in the barn until we transfer him to prison. Place him under guard. I shall take charge of this paper myself. Washington will not hear this news until it is far too late. Don't worry. We'll bag the old fox. Carry on. Yes, sir. And Lieutenant. Yes, sir. Close the door quickly behind you. The night air is very cold. Yes, sir. Come, Colonel. 
There are more pleasant matters to attend to. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Shall we join the ladies? Right ho! Captain, that's the message General Washington is waiting for. If he doesn't receive it within the hour... I know. Stand by to activate the materialization chamber. I'm going to Howe's headquarters and pick up that message. But... Then I'm going to release the messenger in the barn. But, Captain... Keep track of me on the view screen. Yes, sir, but, Captain... Okay, Jet, throw the switch. Suppose something goes wrong with the time machine again. Throw the switch, Jet. Yes, sir. There he goes. He's gone. right here. Yes, but it's not here now. But who could have taken it? I don't know. Unless there's a spy here somewhere. Is there anyone you suspect, sir? No, not yet. But we'll find him right home. Uh, I beg your Really, Colonel Butler? The message was not that important. in the house and we have to stand guard over this rebel messenger. Better to shoot him and get back to the party. Orders is orders. Right. But I'm getting hungry. Besides, it's getting cold out here. Yeah? I can stand guard inside the barn if you think it'll keep you any warmer. You mean with all the smell of them horses? No, thanks. But I'll expect a bonus for this. It won't be long now. They'll be cutting that rebel off to prison. The sooner the better. What kind of a message was that colonial carrying, anyway? Something about aid from France. But I hear Washington's outfit won't last long enough to take aid from anybody. Those stupid fools. Why don't they surrender and have done with it? What's all this talk about representation and democracy? I suppose King George ain't good enough for him. Then we'll jolly well show him that he is. Oh, who goes that? Did you say anything? No. You don't suppose somebody tried to release a prisoner? They wouldn't dare. Probably just a rabble of ground squirrel. Maybe I'd better take a look inside. Go ahead if you like. I'm staying right here by this fire. So am I. Jet, flashlight. 
Thanks. Guards are right outside the door. But who are you? There's no time for explanations. You've got to get to Washington at once. Now, what did they do with your horse? Uh, he's in the next barn. Good. Now, listen. Here's the message they took away from you. I'll go out first and get rid of the guards. The instant they're gone, you dash out, jump on your horse, and ride like the wind for Valley Forge. Got that? Well, yes. OK, well, let's go. Be so nervous. What do you suppose is bothering him more, sis? Who knows? They probably want their supper just as I do. The prisoner! Oh! Stop where I fire! Blimey! He just disappeared! Come on! To him. I don't know. He just vanished. That's all. Just plain vanished. Better sound the alarm. He's got to be around here somewhere. Right. But that didn't look like a rebel uniform. Spark gaps are closing. He's transforming from electrical impulses and beginning to materialize. He's coming in. He's in. Good work, Chet. Now let's make sure the messenger gets away. Stand by, I'll see if I can pick him up. Yes, sir. Stand by to move the time machine ahead. Up cycle reactor. Good. Cut reactor and lock it. Now refocus to Washington's headquarters. Washington sure went through a lot for his country, didn't he? He devoted all he had to the cause of freedom, Jet. His wealth, his energies, his mind, and his heart. when we again transmit you to this remote location on the planet Earth, where Captain Zero and his associates will conduct another experiment in time and space. 